I've been saying for a few months now that 2020 is going to be an exciting year. And here we are at the beginning of 2020, and we have CES. Now, there are no official announcements from any of the camera manufacturers, but we do have three very important topics to discuss today. One is the Nikon D780. I had a video just last week where I talked about the specifications, the rumored specifications for this camera. Well, today we actually have the leaked specifications. I'll get into detail shortly. The next item we will talk about after that is the Canon 1DX Mark III specifications. We'll talk about 6K, well, it's actually 5.4K. We'll talk about video and a few other items. And after that, we're gonna talk about CP+, the photo and imaging show coming out in February and what we can expect to see out of that show. Just last week, I released a video on the Nikon D780. In it was rumored specifications for that camera and an announcement date that was supposed to be today, the first day of CES. We didn't get that, but what we do have, which is almost as good, is we actually have leaked specifications. Hmm, see a trend here? Just on the weekend, we had leaked specifications for the 1DX Mark III. Well, let's take a look at the leaked specifications for the Nikon D780. The Nikon D780 has 12 frames per second continuous shooting. It also has eye detect autofocus and a 51 point autofocus system with 273 areas in live view, similar to the Z6. An ISO range of 100 to 51,000. It has a shutter speed of 1 8,000th, a 3.2, 2.36 million dot LCD touchscreen. And it also features dual UHS SD cards. It also has 4K 30 video, or oh, sorry, 4K 30 frames per second video. It weighs about 840 grams, and it has a pretty good battery life. You should be able to get 2200 shots on a single battery charge. It also supports USB charging, and it has audio input and output jacks. The release date is January the 16th, 2020, at a price of $2,000 for the body alone, but it will also come with a 24 to 120 lens. That wraps up the Nikon D780. Now let's take a look at the Canon 1DX Mark III once again. The Canon 1DX Mark III has a 20.1 megapixel, very similar to the 20 megapixel or the 20.2 megapixel in the Mark II. They have increased the speed to 16 frames per second mechanical and an astonishing 20 frames per second live view. Now the ISO range is from 100 to 102,400, but it's extendable to, a, to an incredible 819,200. This is where this camera sets itself apart from the Mark II. And if you're a photographer, especially a sports photographer, this really matters. The raw buffer size, over a thousand images. If you're doing raw and JPEG, it's still over a thousand images. But if you're doing raw and HEIF, and HEIF is a 10-bit file format, whereas JPEG is an 8-bit, you're looking at around 350 images that the buffer can hold. And that's astonishing, but this isn't surprising. Canon sees this as primarily a photographer's camera, and in fact, Canon looks at most of their hybrid cameras as primarily meant for photographers. And we can see that when we look at these video specifications. I was astonished in the development announcement when I heard this camera was going to have 4K60 with 10-bit internal Canon log recording and RAW recording. However, what we've since found out from the leaked specifications is that dual pixel autofocus will not function at 4K 60 or 50 frames per second, but it will have 5.4K raw internal recording. But again, there'll be no dual pixel autofocus in 5.4K. But, and this is a nice but, so many people were complaining in every other Canon, with exception of the 90D, but it did have soft 4K. They're complaining that Canon is constantly releasing cameras with a 1.75, 1.8, 1.6 crop on a full frame. This Canon, the 1DX Mark III, will have no crop in 4K or RAW recording. So that is huge. Yes, it is disappointing that this camera doesn't have 4K 60 with autofocus. It does have 4K 30 with autofocus. 
But at this price point, that's very tough to swallow for the ordinary filmmaker. I think having no crop in 4K and RAW is significant. I've received so many comments in my videos, and you see them all over the internet, you see them in YouTube. People are sick and tired of Canon cropping the living daylights out of 4K. 1.8, 1.75, 1.74, 1.69, 1.6. .6. That's incredible, especially on a full frame camera. Well, now we don't have that. Yes, we don't have dual pixel autofocus in 4K 60 or RAW. And that's a bit of a problem. But everywhere else, this is looking pretty good. I would stay tuned for the EOS R Mark II. I think that's going to be the mirrorless equivalent of the 5D Mark V. And if we look to the 5D, or sorry, the 1DX Mark II, it had 4K 60. But the 5D Mark IV, the only real difference is that it had 4K 30 as the max. And they took the 120 frames per second and they bumped it down to 720 instead of giving it to us in 1080p, where we just had 60 frames a second. The price, we know the price is now going to be 64.99 US dollars. And the date of release, or sorry, the date of announcement is supposed to be January the 7th. I don't know how much I take stock in that. After I publish this video, we could have the announcement. It could be tomorrow, it could be any day coming up. I do believe it's imminent, but I don't know. I'm just speculating just like everybody else is. At CP Plus, it's rumored that Canon will introduce a new EOS R camera before the show. They will also introduce two new RF mount lenses. We also expect to have an announcement of the high megapixel version of the Canon EOS R. That's equivalent to the 5D R. We might also see the EOS R Mark II. And of course, we're going to see some prime and zoom lenses. So by the time we get through CP Plus, we're going to have a lot of announcements. I can tell you're excited and disappointed. I see this in the comments that you're leaving behind. I see people hating Nikon. I see people hating Canon. How can they remove? How can they cripple their cameras by doing this? I'm done with Canon. I'm done with Nikon. But hold off a bit. These are leaked specifications. Specifications by themselves don't really tell you how good a camera is. Both of these cameras are better than the predecessors. D780 didn't have 4K 30 before. It didn't have 4K period. Now it's got 4K 30. The 1DX Mark III, well, just from the photography, uh, just for photographers, this is a win. For videographers, yeah, it, this is a bit of a tough sell, and I wouldn't recommend it for the ordinary filmmaker, but still, it's much better than its predecessor, Gone is Motion JPEG. Now we have 5.4K. We have raw, we have raw video. We have four point, I'm really screwing this up. We have 10-bit 422 internal recording. So what I recommend, let's wait till we get the announcement. We'll probably see a ton of videos on YouTube from the likes of Tony Northrop and DP Review that are going to go into detail about what these cameras are like. If you guys have any questions regarding this video or you just want to drop a comment, drop it in the comment section down below. I do my best to respond to all comments and questions within 24 hours. If you would like to get notifications of new videos when they come out, because sometimes I'll be producing as many as seven or eight a week, depending on how much news is coming out. Go ahead and click the subscribe button, followed by the bell icon to receive notifications and make sure you select all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Happy New Year. We'll see you soon.